Huygens made a trip in the early 17th century to Venice and he came back with full ideas about sculpture and about art and architecture and he wanted to express that when he constructed his country house. And now we are having your exhibition in the garden of that country house. And it will be a wonderful occasion to admire your works there because I'm sure that it will bring something of the atmosphere of our preference mm -hmm. for Italy and the beauty of marble and bronzes that you, your work contain. When I think of your work, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is the challenge of the marble. Well, first I'd like to say I'm really pleased to be showing in that garden. It's so romantic. It's such a romantic garden. It has you feel the vision of someone who was excited by beauty. Yeah. And for me, beauty is the starting point and the ending point. I don't know that it's true that I challenge marble, but I want to, in a way, show the beauty of marble, which is so often in its translucence. When you see a heavy block of marble, you feel it has weight. When you see marble the way I carve it, it seems to be flying. Yes. And that's always been my vision, to somehow take this beautiful marble and show the light through it. Because my work is very much about light. Light is another dimension to it. And for that reason, more and more marble becomes the only material I can really use, except maybe glass, which I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. uh, becoming more interested in the possibilities of glass. Mm -hmm. And it is suddenly something that comes up. I've seen it in Venice as well. Um, that glass will be a, a, a new or a, a special opportunity to express certain ideas and um, I'm quite sure that, that you will be very, very happy with the, the possibilities of glass. Well, the, the, the great um, advantage of working in marble is until the very last moment you can change how it looks. Even the piece I've been working on in plaster, if it was finished in marble and I looked at it and it was ready to be in an exhibition, I could still say, no, this surface has got to be hollowed out more. In glass, in the few occasions I've done it, a bit like bronze, there's a limit to how much you can affect it. Indeed, so yeah. for the, the way I work, I think I would have to have something that was already perfect when I put it in glass. but. When it was in glass, it may not look perfect anymore <laughs> because the material changes Absolutely. what you're doing yes, so yes, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a challenge in itself. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. challenge in itself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But your experience in marble is is quite remarkable. I I would like to mention the name of Sim and Studio Sim because I think that. You were one of the early artists who mm. came to, to SEM here in Pietra Santa and to work in, in, and to have the opportunity to develop your, 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 your ideas in, in this ambiance, which is, was at the time that SEM was there, yes, must have been this, very inspiring. Yes. No, I went, that really changed my entire life coming to Pietra Santa. I came through a very w wonderful sculptor who has been very underwritten about since her death, Alicia Panalba. Mm -hmm. And Alicia Panalba showed in the same gallery I did in New York, and she said, you must go to Pietra Santa. And she told me of a foundry, and she told me about Sem. Oh, yeah. And when I met Sem, he was so excited about my work that he said, I don't, you don't need to pay me until you begin to make money. And he gave me a check made out to me for any amount I needed until that moment, but not to pay him back with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, ha I still have that check. <laughs> but what I discovered with Sam was that I really needed to know how to carve. And so he sent me to all the really old artisans, that one called Mario, who only did roses. And I learned how to carve a rose so that you saw the, the light coming into every petal. 
using little tools like almost picks, like your dentist would use. And I went to someone, also I was having trouble, I wanted to have something that re resembled hair in an abstract way, and he sent me to an old man called Pietro, who died two years later, who showed me how to give the feeling about hair, and then how to change it so it didn't look like hair, but there like it might have been hair. <laughs> Because so, I remember reading um, about your early contact with Zadkin, yes. and that, um, well, also Zadkin gave you the opportunity to, to, to work with him in, in a certain way, but that he absolutely did not give you any no, instructions he whatsoever. No, he never spoke to me about anything. <laughs> Zadkin was re but you, what you learned, and maybe that's what young artists have to learn, is what you have to give up if you want to be an mm. artist. How that has to be the most central thing in your life. Absolutely, yes. How you have to focus on it, because that's how Zadkin was, how he lived, how he thought. And he, he, was, he was an amazing teacher in, 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 in just his example. I see, yes. But one, I mean, every time I made a clay model, the head, this, I've told this story, the head would break off. And I went to him one day, and I, I said, what's happening? Why is, and he saw it. And he, he just went, ma, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. The, and the truth was, if I had a student, I would now say, it's because the clay is dry, drying so fast in that narrow part that's yeah, the neck, yeah, you've yeah. got to put more water around it. But, <laughs> no. So you see, most of my work is without a head. Yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, so coming to Sem made you also aware of the practical problems yes, of how yes, to create and absolutely. how to, to reach what you really have in your yes, mind yes, and, and to and realize that as well. And to know that until you knew the technique, you might not even imagine you could do it. Mm -hmm. So when I learned about layering and how to do that, that became a, an important part of my work. When I learned how to do robing and pleating, that could also become something I could then destruct yeah, as I yeah, did yeah. it but you had to know how to do it to begin with. Yes, of course, yes. yes. I'm always fascinated by your uh, collaboration or, let's say, you being close to, to Henry Moore. Um, but I, I, see, uh, I see always the differences. No, I'm, I wasn't really close to Henry Moore. I knew Henry Moore. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the dealer, in, the brilliant dealer in America, Alex Rosenberg, mm -hmm. who was who was only dealer in America, uh, loved my work, but he didn't feel he could show. Henry Moore didn't really want another carver. And so for many years, he, Rosenberg would call me on the phone and say, soon, I think soon, I want to do a show. Don't go with anyone else. And I adored him. I said, no, I won't. And one day, he actually he phoned and said, um, I want to do a show of your work with, with another artist. If you, I said, no, you know, I've said, I only want to have a solo show. I don't want to show with another. He said, but let me tell you who the artist is. And it was Henry Moore. And Henry Moore was going to have his last show at Alex. In fact, he died the following year. And he said, Alex said, well, here, are, he gave him a choice of other sculptors because he knew he would take me. And he, took, he said, oh, I'd like to show it, Blumenfeld, because my work was so different. Yes. But I was carrying forward the way of treating the body, of dealing with abstraction, but having a sense of the figure still. Yes. And yeah. he liked my yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a very yeah. big show together. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, when I think of your work, I think of, of a, a total lightness, of something mm -hmm. that is floating in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And Henry Moore is the opposite. It's, yes. it's the earth, yes. it's the weight, it's heaviness, it's, uh, yes. and that has its own beauty, of course. Yes, but, it does. but it is completely different from yours. Yes, so I was always fascinated. For, and, no, and, and mine I'm, has a lot to do with movement yes, and light. Yes, of course, yes. And um, even in cases where he would have two or three pieces, they would be fixed to the base. Yeah, yeah. Mine, I, I, I think I became known for work that in this country was called componible, mm -hmm. works that had no top or bottom and that could go in many, many directions. Great. 
I think do we have I think this is a little mixed up because so the, the the first then this was a model so I did it then very large but eat, eat every piece could go in many different ways and they could build up to make towers they could ground each other there could be one standing it's absolutely amazing yes. and the, the, every, every piece had no fixed configuration, so you can't look at it and say which is the bottom. And when you, fit, when you put them together, they, they formed very different. Some, and it had to do also with the way people were supporting each other and how a family could exist. Yes, yes There was yes. almost no fixed way to do it and that was an idea people really were excited yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. and I did it for a long time and then I didn't do it I mean yeah. you that's another thing I think is very very important in any art form nothing changes without risk nothing changes if you don't risk changing your own life even. No. you stay in that box the work can only reflect who you are unless you're copying and but if the work's coming from you in order for that work to change you have to accept change and risk so that means that when I do a work work in a certain period I can't really repeat that work that's what I did mm -hmm. then yes but I what strikes me uh, even if you show mm -hmm. me this in a in small scale is that there is something very physical to it mm -hmm. and that even if if you look at abstract forms at abstract shapes mm -hmm. um, nevertheless the, it brings in mind and you said mm -hmm. that already it could be a family it could yeah, be a, a, yeah. a, 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 an encounter and yeah. that's also a title that you sometimes use when yeah, you make a, yes, a yeah. give a title to a work that it is indeed a meeting between between bodies if I can yes, say so. Yes. And sometimes pieces go together in a way that it's part of your own being mm -hmm. in being dissembled and put, put together again. But I, I had done an exhibition in Paris of this kind of work, quite a bit bigger. Yeah. And somebody from New York bought a, a sculpture of three parts in tra red travertine, quite big. And when he got to, got, it arrived in New York, he phoned absolutely shattered and said to me I think I have the wrong sculpture I it doesn't go the way I see it in the picture I said it goes a lot of ways he said no 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 then then I just want it the way I saw it so he flew me to New York for three days and I put it the way it should, he liked it the way it had been when he saw it he had a photo of it and then I said to him you know I think your, li your life is too rigid. If, if you, you should be able to move these pieces and see them in different ways. And he's, he was absolutely fed furious at that idea. But two years later, he wrote me, I've just left my wife, I've left my law firm, I'm following another life, and I can see what you mean now. Every day I want to change the sculpture. Ha, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's quite funny. To have that opportunity yeah. also. It's wonderful, yes. And um, what, 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 is your, um, what is your experience, let's say, what is the relation between marble and bronze? Is, is, if you think in bronze, is, is, is the way of thinking already at the start different? or? Is it a, ch a choice that you make no, later? No, because I don't. When I start, I have no idea where I'm going. I just get play, and I I work it. I might do ten models on a mm -hmm. weekend, and maybe two of those will be okay. Maybe oh, yeah. none of them will. But I'm I'm rather than make drawings because the work is so dimensional. I I actually just do it, and I have no idea either what it's going to be like or and in, in fact this the theme I've been working on a lot of the new pieces are called Exodus oh, yeah. came completely it was a shock to me when I saw the pieces and what they were about and now though I, I would like to do something else I I start with clay and if 
always one of the, the group of new pieces will be to do with that theme. I haven't finished it. So we will surprise the Dutch um, lovers of art and of sculpture with, uh, with a number of beautiful works that are from different periods mm -hmm. in your career. Yes, and very so much that's so. a fascinating thing because you will see uh, uh, as a visitor. Once yes. will be inside a yes. wooden piece that yeah, just no one has seen before. Mm. That's come straight in its crate Wonderful. from Italy. Yes, it's, so that's good. But it be relates to earlier work uh -huh. as well. It's uh -huh. um, and you have already thought a little bit also about how to use the space in the garden. Yes, we uh -huh. went through the garden. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I think it's going to look. Amazing, very, very exciting. We, especially when the garden is in bloom, it yeah, will yeah. be so beautiful. We've had a very hard time because, to me, the centerpiece of the exhibition is a piece called Spirit of Life. Yes. And it was too tall to transport standing up. Uh -huh. So we have had a tremendous problem of having to decide, do I take that uh -huh. out or, or do I find out how to create it, um, and, but we, I think it's such an important piece, I yes, wanted to send yes. it, so it is coming. Ah, yeah. well, many of the pieces in this, this show have to do with the idea of spiritual transformation, yes. and uh, Tree of Life transformation is an earlier bronze from that, that idea, uh, Spirit of Life, which is the centerpiece, of the exhibition starts like that and then opens up and um, but it's all about reaching upward the idea that we as human beings have a spiritual side and if we reach for that instead of be drowned by the material side we we can achieve so much more within ourselves uh, so I think mystery spirit of life meridiana Tree of Life transformation are, are all related to that idea. Uh, psyche and tension, it, actually tension goes back to about 1985, uh -huh. really? but um, this, is a, a new, this is a new version of it, uh -huh. but it was, the, the idea was that, and that starts with a sort of two bodies close together and then separating, but oh, yeah. Instead of feeling they're separating in something spiritual, they're separating in tension. I see. Yes. Yeah. And that that piece, that's a very very beautiful piece. In my own mind, I would like never to give a name to sculpture, <laughs> but people like that. I mean, you have to have a name to it. Oh, souls! This is a beautiful piece. Yeah, so, souls bronze is the beginning of the, all the works called souls. I had been walking in an olive grove, a very ancient olive grove, and the tree trunks and the shape of the trees had become so eroded, you just saw a kind of shell. They looked like shells rather than trees. And I had this, this vision, or it matched a vision, that, that they were souls that had transmigrated and now they were in the shape of these trees. And, that's how our souls would look in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did, must have come back and done about 30 sculptures very quickly in play. And this was one of the ones that was a big success, and yeah. I did it larger. So it's a, that'll be in the center right. as well. And then you have also a transparent uh, piece. And then I have one that, that we were talking earlier just about glass. Yeah. And this one was an experiment I did in. It's not actually glass, but it's not plastic either. It was a something that, that has, has, was used for the, uh, by I.M. Pei for the roof of the Louvre uh -huh. to give the sense of glass and translucency and not changing. And it, it's very, I think it was, I wanted to have a mixture of work in this in the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. So it will also announce you maybe more. Yeah. Uh, transparent uh, things that you will produce uh, later on, maybe. And then perhaps one of the, the, the two small marble ones in the house, which are extremely beautiful sculptures, I think, uh -huh. yes. uh, and and quite recent. And then the the last one, which I I sent, is also to go inside, and that's Wonderful. 
a, a, also a version of, of souls, but done now and in, in cedar wood about uh, maybe almost a meter. Yeah, yeah. Last year we had an exhibition of Epidam. Yes, I know. Uh, and his work uh, that is also mainly also produced here in Pietra Santa was admired by many people. And of course, already when we showed his work, we talked about you and, uh, well, of, of course, the dream of having an exhibition of your mm -hmm. work in Holland was it was very strong with us. And so, we are, again, we are very, very happy that you will show these beautiful pieces and uh, with also the help of, of Erdogan because, um, well, you have been working uh, more or less in the same circumstances for, for, for oh, many Oh, we've been very many good time. friends, yes, as yes, you yes, know, yeah, for yeah, many yes. years. I, I wanted to ask you something about uh, about the, the idea of of of, uh, of of modern art. I I, I just uh, was in 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 Venice and uh, I saw the, the Biennale and uh, there was a lot of discussion. What was would be the basis of how people select art at this particular moment? And people are talking very much about roots, about background, about gender and about uh, all kind of, well, things that you might have an other opinion about when you select works of art. Uh, I think that, that quality, for example, would be a very good way to think about art instead of all these new or not very new concepts. What is your opinion about this? My, I, th I think if art has to be hyphenated, it's not art. If you have to call it women's art, I would never show in a show called women's art because I don't. I think art is one thing, and it, and there are certain requirements in my mind for it. And even um, I, I, to have to, to have to refer to a specific thing before you say art is already diminishing the idea that it's art. I think art is it's. In so much, so much discussion about who is the artist, whether the artist is the studio or the artist is the originator who has the idea. And yet, if you go to a museum, the greatest works you look at, you don't even know the name of the artist. Why did they survive? It wasn't the name of the artist. It was that that work had something that people across all cultures have been able to look at and recognize. Mm -hmm. I think we're living in a very dangerous time because beauty, which is what every artist strove for, has been taken off its pedestal and I think and become um, politicized, mm -hmm. even to the point where it certainly started after the Second World War when artists felt, and maybe it started even with the philosopher Adorno, who said, to create, this, he didn't say exactly that, but to write a, a beautiful poem after the Holocaust is, I can't remember what he said it was exactly, but I think he, he, he said, you can't, how can you do that? And I believe that after any pain or during any pain, beauty is what helps us survive. So I think that, that we can talk about what the quality, what or lack of quality, or what it is that is used for selection today. But if we look to the future, or we look to the past, we see that it is the public, it is people who recognize in something, something wonderful and revere it. And if, if that goes, I don't know what art will become. I think that you give us a very beautiful gift with your work, and that the possibility to show it also in our surroundings is a wonderful thing that we should be very grateful for. Thank you very much for this conversation. Oh, thank you. I've enjoyed it.